This week on NBA 2K TV, we're joined by Kings legend Chris Webber. Plus, we have the winners of the Shoe Creator Contest, and you vote for the most popular. Robbie talks about some hidden gems in my team, and we have your top plays. Welcome to this week's episode of NBA 2K TV. The land of the it's NBA basketball on 2K Sports. We're glad you could join us on this exciting Friday night matchup with Greg. We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. Look at Oklahoma City. If the playoffs started today, they'd hold the number five seed. Of course, they're looking to build on that. And you know, for the Thunder, they've done a good job staying relevant this season. I mean, I was concerned they'd suffer a drop off, but this, give them credit. They've hung in here in this playoff race. The resiliency has been crucial for this team. Anytime it looks like they may start to drag a little bit, they've picked it back up and stayed in the hunt. So let's take a look at the Charlotte starting lineup. Washington out there with Bridges, and there's Bismack Biambo. Then there's Terry Rozier, and it's Graham in at the shooting guard position. And for Oklahoma City, Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Gilgis Alexander out there with Paul, and it's Dort in its small forward. Back to Adams. A second chance effort, and the layup is good. Boy, the strength and the activity of Steven Adams makes him a force on the backboards. Doris Adams, a terrific player on the floor. But you know what? He's a great teammate as well. Uh, they always talk about the great chemistry he brings to the Thunder. And anyone who's had a conversation with Steven Adams knows he is quite a character. This guy is so easygoing. He's fun. I think he brings a great vibe to the locker room. Four on the shot clock. Bridget for three. The Thunder pull it in. This game coming after a loss against the Jazz. Gilgis Alexander. With an average of around 19 and a half points a game, his scoring has been a constant for them. Doesn't go that time. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. Last time they met was in Charlotte. And they lost a close one last time they saw each other. And, and you have to think that it was the foul trouble that really kept them from getting the win. Yeah, some of their starters had to take an early seat on the bench, and that ruined the rhythm and flow they were trying to establish. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, I got to talk to James Borrego a bit a few minutes ago. One player he mentioned was Chris Paul. Coach said he is just a gamer. He'll do whatever it takes to win. We've got to have that same determination. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, David. Graham, the pass to Bridges. And it's off from three-point range. The Thunder have gone just one of four to get this game started. Took him no time at all on that one. And you gotta love how Paul sees the whole court so well. Maybe the best quality for a point guard to have. Rozier kicks to Bridges. This is to Graham. Rozier with the ball. He's coming off a 40-point game against Miami over Paul. And that one goes long. Thunder have gone 2 of 5 here, making 40% so far to start out the game. And they take the lead. Just setting the tone with an aggressive move to the rag. And, and where's the help defensively? To me, Greg, that's a complete lack of communication on that side of the ball. These guys need to be talking to each other. The Hornets shoot. All right, let's look at the first category, the best use of color. Congratulations, Eptic Rev. 
Next up, best. And a look behind the curtain here. Final preparations for the challenge ahead. Hoping to come out of the gates strong. Clouds passing high over the 10th Avenue Bridge and the Mississippi River here in Mid. All right, David, thanks. And a quick look here at some of the numbers for Culver. And his three-point shooting has gotten a lot better over his last 10 games. He looks so much more comfortable from beyond. There's no doubt he's got the green light to let it fly whenever the shot's there for him. So here's Miami's starting group. Adebayo is out there with Jones. Then there's Jimmy Butler. Then it's Robinson. And it's Nunn in at the guard position. And for Minnesota, D'Angelo Russell out there with Beasley. Then it's Carl Anthony Towns. And it's a Kogi in at the three. Three-pointer, Butler. The shot misses. And it's the Timberwolves taking it the other way. Tough loss coming against the Rockets in the last game they played. Well, when you're facing a team that's feeding off the crowd's energy, you have to bring your A game. And they didn't do that defensively. It looked like there were communication breakdowns all night. Deadly, especially when you're on the road. Here's Nunn. He's guarded by Russell. Nunn passes to Autobahn. Just five on the clock. Butler. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. You know, Smitty, we know players are getting more nights off around this time of the year. How much did that occur when you were playing in the NBA? Uh, coaches and organizations really came up to guys when they see they were hurt. You didn't want them to play when they were injured. And then at the end of the season, Kevin, usually you looked and said, ooh, we have the number six seed locked up or whatever place locked up. And then that's when you start to get nights off. It not, I don't remember doing it during game 20 and game 30 where guys starting to get nights off. Outside Robinson and out of bio throws it down. And, and the definition of teamwork right there on that alley -oop. And Greg, what about the finish? Bringing it down with some Impressive. thunder. Yeah. Here in the first quarter with about two minutes gone by. For three, Beasley carries it from three-point range. And that's exactly what he's looking for, draining the triple. Robinson passes to Nunn. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Wow, that's a defensive breakdown. Can't do that against good scores. Now, here is Russell. Defense is right there. To the paint. It's stolen by Adebayo. Here's none. He's guarded by Russell. Puts it up from 12. And the Heat get another bucket right there. They have really found a rhythm here early. Four for five to start this game. And here in the first, uh, about three minutes in. To the middle. Here's Towns. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Man. Congratulations to all of the winners, and it's time for you to vote again. That's right. Which shoes do you want to see made in-game? Let us know. And check back to see who takes that grand prize. Ooh. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the WNBA on 2K Sports. We'll watch the Connecticut Sun in this one as they go up against the Washington Mystics. Along with Tim Swartz and Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga, and we're happy to have you along for another great game. 
And guys, when you look ahead, who do you think will be considered the best player in the WNBA five years from now? Finally, a good question from you, Blake. I'll go with Brianna Stewart. I know she tore her Achilles, but she's never averaged less than 18 points per game in a WNBA season and became the league MVP in just her third year. I expect her to get healthy, get fully recovered, and dominate the league for years to come. Solid choice, Tim, but I'm going to say Asia Wilson. Now, she's got an advanced skill set for her age, and if she develops a consistent three-point shot, she is going to be unguardable. And look, we're talking about somebody who averaged over 20 points per game as a rookie. Now here's Strickland. Back to Thomas. The putback, great positioning on the putback. Well, with the developed understanding of the game, Jones uses timing and body control to inhale rebounds. Here's Tolliver. Here's Cloud. The shot, no good. Courtney Williams with the defensive effort. And just around a minute and a half into this first quarter. Thomas. Clock at six. Strickland defended by Atkins. Strickland with the bucket. Continually setting up teammates. Thomas is truly an extension of the coach on the floor. Right side, Tolliver. Deladon outside. Shoots over Jones. And she gets it to go from the high post. Strong mid-range game with the sound ability to get her shot off. Defenses have their hands full with Deladon. Pass to Jones. Here's Thomas. To the middle. And that one's good. Jones. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Side Tolliver to the inside. Della Don rebounded by John Quell Jones. Here's Williams, and there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses, and she'll shoot two. And there's the whistle, foul on the Washington Mystics. You know, I think that it's cool that Williams serves as a comedian for her team, kind of like uh, Blake with us. She's always laughing and trying to lighten the mood. The first free throw is good. Yeah, but don't let her fool you. Despite being lighthearted off the court, Williams is all business on the court. Yeah, she's a fearless talent and does not mess around when she's out there. Courtney likes to play in attack mode as her team relies on her playmaking ability. And this Connecticut Sun team, very strong on the boards. Every player contributes to the effort, usually can gain an advantage with their rebound. Cloud. Great pass to set up the land. Not at all a bad passer for a 6-3 forward. Sanders with a great feed for the hoop. The Sun leading. Pass to Thomas. Here's Strickland. Deladon covering. 